these things, every time I talk about them, I want to attach it to me and then dramatically rip it off. But as I've said before, I wear glasses and it wouldn't end well. I'll just get all tangled up. So I'll just have to throw it because basically, as we've been discussing, hopefully after July the 19th, these things will no longer be mandatory. Yes, honestly, I cannot tell you. I wear glasses. You will all know by now if you also wear glasses, the steaming up, the tangling. Oh, thank goodness they are done. Um, but the government, of course, has hinted that people should still wear them in public places. The Health Secretary, Sajid Javid, has said that he's going to carry on covering his face for the foreseeable future if, for example, he was to be in a crowded space. But here's the thing. So, you know, they're not mandatory, but we're supposed to be wearing them if we're in a crowded space. But nightclubs are going to reopen and I'm guessing, I mean, I'm a little bit old for them now, I've got to be honest, and I've got a baby, so I think for me, my nightclubbing days are gone. But I imagine that these things are going to be pretty crowded, ex uh, um, enclosed spaces. So I wonder, what are people expecting? Are they going to be expecting that people wear their masks when they go clubbing? How's that going to work? Um, I'm joined by nightclub owner and entrepreneur Alex Proud to discuss this. Alex, good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Now, you you know, we talk often about um, the economic impact of these whole COVID restrictions, and I know that the nightclub industry has been particularly, um, you know, badly hit. So when you open um, properly to full capacity, you're going to be very busy, I'm expecting. So what will you do about masks? Do you think your um, guests will wear them? I mean, it's, it's obviously a matter of personal choice, and I think half the the point now, isn't it, that, that, that we leave that to personal choice, which is kind of the old fashioned British way. We might have seemed to have forgotten for the last uh, 18 months that that was our heritage, was that we're a, 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 a democratic state where we make our choices as adults. I think the key thing to remember is what a lot of people forget is, is nightclubs are much cleaner and safer. I think people realize they have been for years. We were covered much more by health and safety uh, rules than, than the atmospheres in places like supermarkets and trains are. I mean, in, in our clubs, the ventilation changes the air every 10 minutes, which is not far off a, a surgery in a hospital. Um, you know, we, we're well run, we're clean. And I, and I also think we need to bear in mind that the entire point that we're opening up right now is so that, to be really blunt, people under the age of 30 get this thing and get over with. The government aren't spelling it out quite that clearly, but if you read the subtext, it's let's do this now before the autumn comes so we get the bump out of the way. And I think there's a real difference between last year when older people caught the disease, there was a real danger. With younger people, predominantly, this is a cold or flu, and we're seeing that over and over again. So I think really a lot of the fear here is, is being overdone. I think wear what you want, enjoy yourselves. And, and let's face it now, this is a, a flu stroke cold epidemic for the young. But um, if what you're saying is that basically, you know, young people are going to come together, they're going to catch this COVID and then hopefully get the immunity and move beyond it. Um, aren't you then suggesting that these nightclub dance floors are going to be kind of some breeding ground for um, COVID? And aren't you worried about that? No, I mean, I'm saying exactly the opposite. I'm saying like most nightclubs and bars, we've invested tens, if not hundreds of thousands in upgrading our ventilation. We did this last year when the government asked us to, and ironically then didn't open us. So we've been sitting on huge investments, and most nightclubs now have extremely good ventilation systems that are much better. Your train journey into work or your bus journey into work is going to be far more dangerous than being in a nightclub, even without a mask, because the air is changed so regularly they are so well cleaned and most nightclubs by definition have high ceilings the, the days of being in tiny little nightclubs are long gone most people most young people like being in very dramatic double height or in our case triple height venues that, that are incredibly spacious have huge amounts of air and allow for really good air circulation they're really safe my point i was making was separate i was saying for those who go but there is still a small chance of catching it you're missing the point that the government opened up now because they do want to get the bump out of the way with young people. If they can't get double vaccinated soon, albeit we say to all our young staff, you know, there are drop in centres. Go grab your vaccination. You can get it any time. You don't have to wait to be called up. And that reduces your chances by 60 to 90 percent of getting the damn thing in the first place. So let's all try and get vaccinated as soon as we can. But I don't want to be wandering around with, like yourself. I'm fed up of wearing a mask and like yourself, spend my whole life with steamed up glasses, not being able to see anything, and, and that makes me feel rather stressed. 
Well, Alex Proud, thank you very much. I know your industry has had an absolute hammering and we wish you well.